it was by chance that in about the year 2000, I think, I wound up in the desert on a visit to Yucca Mountain. America's planned nuclear waste repository, 100 miles north of Las Vegas. A hole in the ground where 10 plus billion dollars were spent on vastly expensive experiments, trying to prove that this place is gonna be absolutely uh, safe, quote, for the next 10,000 years. So it just felt like, wait a minute, people, <laughs> this, is, this is nuts. Among other things, have you even thought, you know, we were professional futurists, many of us were on this trip. Uh, what exactly is this world 10,000 years from now that we're trying to protect? <laughs> Science fiction <laughs> is what we were playing out at vast expense at Yucca Mountain. The kinds of experiments they were doing in that mountain, it's not a mountain, it's just a ridge, it certainly didn't persuade anybody for political reasons. Yucca Mountain was not opened and will probably never be opened. Then I started to look at, well, what actually is the amount of hazard that comes from nuclear waste? The first thing I found out is what people were actually doing with the nuclear waste, which is being generated all this time by every nuclear power plant, turns out to be pretty good. They just put it in this pretty simple, but very workable, dry cask storage. Then they park it out back of the parking lot and you can go there and see it. There's the nation's nuclear waste. Is it causing any problems? No. The other realization for me, and it took a while to get through, is that by not putting it in the ground, you've got the option to use it as fuel and fourth generation reactors. Wow, we can take this waste from the nuclear plant and recycle it into fuel, either by reprocessing or by having a new kind of reactor that uses it as fuel. Um, that looks very much like a renewable resource. People are always talking about nuclear waste, the accumulation of nuclear waste, and I did too. I think it's around 70,000 tons have accumulated of used fuel in the United States. I thought the quantity was staggering. In fact, all the spent nuclear fuel from commercial nuclear plants in the United States could fit in a single football field if you stack the fuel rods to a height of about three meters. That's it. But of that, only a very small fraction, mainly plutonium, is long-lived. By long-lived, I mean would still be hot thousands of years from now, still be highly radioactive. Volumetrically, nuclear produces tiny amounts of waste. Uh, the entire waste production from France's 50 nuclear power stations, which produce 80% of the country's electricity, are under the floor in one room. Compare that with the billions of tons of waste produced by coal-fired power stations. It completely blows away most of the anti-nuclear arguments. Uh, so uh, it's, it's not, nuclear waste is not an environmental issue. It's not something which, as an environmentalist, I'm concerned about. One of the most inspiring stories anywhere is the story of France. Here's a country in the early 70s that is burning oil for electricity. It doesn't have coal reserves. It doesn't want to be dependent on gas coming from Northern Europe and Russia. But when the oil shocks happened and the prices went up dramatically, the French realized they needed to get serious about a different source of energy. They said, this is serious, and it has to do with national security. So they focused on making sure that they had the best nuclear engineers and the standard design for the reactors and just roll it out.
What's so significant about what the French did is that they did it so quickly. They scaled up almost exactly at the pace that we need to scale up nuclear power globally. They now have 80% of their electricity coming from nuclear. Their trains are electric powered. They have clean air. They have the cheapest energy in Europe. They're selling it to everybody else. And they are greener than green Denmark, greener than green Germany. I didn't know what French per capita carbon dioxide emissions were, which is actually the most important question to ask. The answer is they're about five tons per person per year. Germany is about 10 tons per year. So Germany has much, much higher per person emissions of carbon dioxide than neighboring France because France is nuclear and Germany is trying to get out of nuclear. When we look at nuclear, we have to understand that we're making a long-term investment. Now it's a big upfront capital cost, but these are plants that are gonna last 60, 80, maybe even 100 years. And much of the other infrastructure that's being built will last far longer than that. And when you really look at it that way, there's just really no question. It's a much more economical alternative to very expensive solar panels or very expensive wind turbines that require backup power. The current generation of reactors we're building now are third generation of reactors. This technology is much safer. But fourth generation reactors, like the integral fast reactors, can use the waste from the first three generations as fuel. The, the great philanthropist Bill Gates has put money and, and time into a traveling wave reactor that you basically stick in the ground and it goes through its body of fuel over a period of 60 years. You don't need to refuel it. Uh, there's a thorium reactor the same group is working on. Other fourth generation coming along with the small modular reactors. They look exactly like the kind of local power source that environmentalists uh, have increasingly been saying we should have. So there's a renaissance in reactor design that those are just the first glimpses of. It.